Your heart is connected to a higher source that creates the pulse of the heart. So the breathing of the lungs and the pulse of the heart are in a particular rhythm that's entrained to something at a higher level. You have the hyperbola, you have the vortex coming from two different directions, like at the chakras, and in between it, you get the spinning disc of BG3 energy, simply creating correctly the sound of these things. The sound was the vibration itself, and by harmonizing the time pulse, can put them into resonance with higher forces. So this is a core part of uniting the different parts of the ancient Egyptian temple science and other old traditions connected to the Shakti concept of the Himalayan tradition. And what it actually does is it is the carrier wave that sends all the other energies. It was found by the French it could penetrate thicknesses of lead that could not be penetrated by x-rays. And so they were fascinated by it. And so in applying the negative green carrier wave energy, it is what inside the physical body actually moves the energy from one location to another, makes the organs work. And it also sends things from one system to another system. It is what conducts the energy in the energy meridians of the body, like the acupuncture meridians from the Chinese tradition. It is the foundation of sexual energy and vitality in the body. At the emotional and mental level, it breaks down resistance, opening up the blocked psychological aspects of a person to open to massive shifts in one's life and bring subconscious blockages into awareness. At the spiritual level, it actually conducts the energy from higher plane levels into the human physical body. And the more spiritual activity a person does, blessing, prayer, meditation, etc., the stronger this vibration is from their energetic field. All of our modern technology is based on cracking two codes, the code of the spectrum of electromagnetic energy and the code of the spectrum of physical matter. We call the spectrum of physical matter the periodic table of elements, based on the work of Mendeleev in the late 1800s in Russia. Now once we cracked the code where we identified every aspect of electromagnetic energy and every part of physical substance in the world, at that point they could put the two together. So all of our modern technology is based on knowing what exact elements from the periodic table to match with what frequencies from the electromagnetic spectrum. And that's what makes your cell phone work. That's what makes the lights work at your house. That's what makes your car run. Everything is based on a combination of these two things. But as we often describe in the work of biogeometry, what they left out was the focus of every classical tradition because it's only been the last couple of hundred years that modern science and medicine has only focused on the physical plane. Before that, Every classical tradition focused on the level of vital life force and higher consciousness above the physical, and they manipulated those energies to be able to do things on the physical plane. They actually worked at the causative level above the physical that actually gives rise to the physical level itself. Today we manipulate the physical directly, the physical and the electromagnetic. There's often a confusion about vital life force being electromagnetic energy. And I don't believe that's actually the case. I think the best solution to this was given by the great Rosicrucian teacher, Rudolf Steiner, where he described the way that the vital life force, which is the foundation of every classical scientific and healing system, is at a level above the physical. And that is like what was referred to as scalar waves by Nikola Tesla. And these higher energies from the vibrational level referred to as the etheric in the Greek tradition, referred to as chi in the Chinese tradition, ki in Japan, prana in India, etc. Every tradition had a name for it. That energy penetrates down into the physical and animates physical substance. The human physical body without this is a corpse. It animates physical substance, but in so doing, it slows down below the speed of light and begins to disintegrate. As it disintegrates, it gets to be retarded Hertzian waves as described by Tesla and becomes the electromagnetic spectrum. So the problem is, is that we've created a new technology that's very powerful for manipulating physical structures but does not take into account what the effect of the vibrations from these are on actual living beings because the actual living aspect of biological life has been stripped out of modern biology. You're not allowed to describe it. If you try to talk about life force in modern biology, they will say that you are a victim of the vitalist fallacy and they will have nothing to do with you. 
So the knowledge of thousands of years of observations and particular techniques in Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, Mayan healing, all types of traditions all over the world have been completely cast out. But now, with having identified in modern times the electromagnetic and physical spectrums, the French succeeded in identifying the vibrational spectrum, the level connected to the vital life force itself. And that became a foundation for the creation of modern biogeometry. Now, some of this was connected to the knowledge in ancient Egypt, but it's in a new form. Dr. Ibrahim Karim demonstrated that through applying a simple geometric form to biological life, he could change the life functions in a biological system through very simple geometric forms. And one of the big discoveries of Dr. Karim is that one thing I identified is that the French vibrational spectrum of the 12 bands, each of these bands has a very particular power. And that power is a polarized power. Some are more yin, some are more yang. Some are more activating, some are more sedating. But he said there's another power, and that is the power that is beyond polarity. That is the power of the original singularity, of the original center, the energy of the unified source of all creation that is beyond polarity where everything is one. And so then he began to apply these vibrational methods that the French had pioneered in modern times based on their inspiration from ancient Egypt. And he then found a way to be able to identify the vibrational characteristic of that energy of the center, of that original unified source, the energy that harmonizes and balances all living energy systems, not through applying an opposite polarity for polarity balancing, but by directly activating the center itself. And he found that one of the hallmarks of that vibration from the center is a gold vibration. And that classical traditions consider this gold vibration to be the source of physical gold. Physical gold, as everything in the physical plane, is a crystallization into physical matter of a subtle vibration from a higher level. And so all of these references and different traditions, the Taoists, the Christians, the ancient Egyptians talking about the gold was not a metaphor, it's quite literal. So when a person does advanced spiritual work, the saints develop the golden aura around their head and their body because they're in resonance with the center. They're in resonance with the original unified source. And so Dr. Karim took his work further and was able to identify some of the secrets of ancient Egypt through this vibrational science that he developed and called biogeometry. One of the aspects of this is that different geometric forms based on the shape caused wave create different energetic effects. But there's a deeper level behind that. And that is different geometric forms actually resonate with different levels of creation, or what Dr. Karim calls planes of nature. So this is a form that we use an advanced level of biogeometry called the Ibrahim Karim Universal Pendulum. And it actually combines shapes of multiple different plane levels, the physical, the vital, the emotional, astral, the mental, the causal, the spiritual, and the divine levels that all have particular geometries that resonate with them. This means that by using the correct geometric form, the ancient Egyptians understood they could create a direct resonant exchange, like with an antenna, based on the sacred geometry. Sacred geometry became an antenna to resonate with a particular higher plane. So for example, if we take a look at this level, what in the human being is the emotional body and emotional function, and referred to as an outer plane in the Western tradition as the astral plane. Astral coming from a root aster, meaning star, meaning a source of light. And the forms that connect to that are the form of a hemisphere or a pyramid. So when they use the form of a pyramid, it wasn't just for pyramid power as an energy, but what pyramid power actually is, is the negative green ray that was identified by the French, the penetrating carrier ray. That comes from this particular form. Both the hemisphere and a pyramid create that negative green emanation. But the reason why that form is creating the emanation is because the shape itself acts like an antenna for the astral plane. And that's why they knew further that by modifying the shape on the pyramid, by making a slight indentation in the center of the four faces of the pyramid, it's so slight you can't see it from the ground. You have to see it from the air. And from the air, you can see here the slight indentation at the faces of the major pyramids at Giza Plateau. What that did is it changed the resonance of the pyramid from the general astral plane 
where the lower astral has some questionable energetics, to resonate with the higher astral. And when you do that, it cleans up the energy that's being projected by the pyramid. So one of the great secrets is the geometries act like antennas to resonate with higher planes of creation. And then as a secondary effect, they will emanate through the shape-caused wave a particular vibration that is the result of that particular connection. And they knew enough about it, in fact, to work not just with the general negative green ray, as we see here, but actually to work with sub-bands or sub-energies inside the general band. So the placement of the king's chamber inside the Great Pyramid is not in the exact middle where you might expect it to be. It's not in the middle. It's about 6 degrees, 15 minutes off of center. And so that's to get a particular carrier wave within the negative green band that's a sweet spot in the entire band, a sweet spot for being able to connect a person through a carrier wave to higher dimensional levels, which is why that place in the king's chamber was used for these initiation rituals as described by the Freemasons and others. And now let's talk a little bit about exactly how it works. So this is the vertical and horizontal wave pendulums. For each of the bands, the energy may either propagate parallel to the Earth's surface, we call it a horizontal wave, or it can move perpendicular, and we call that a vertical wave. They create different biological effects. And so we have two different pendulums to be able to detect it, and they're fairly simple to use. And this not only can be used for design purposes, to design things that have the strong vibration to them, it also can be used to test things that naturally have this energy. So what makes a spiritual power spot in nature is that it has a strong concentration of this universal harmonizing force, the BG3. Every classical tradition is the guardian of particular places on the Earth's surface that are their spiritual power spots. And now you can tell a true power spot from a false one, one that's been falsely claimed to be one, is that it has a strong concentration of this BG3 vibration if it's a true power spot. In the microcosm of a human body, those power spots appear as the chakras, acupuncture points, cells of the body, all of which naturally have this BG3 energy as well. And this connects to all types of energetic functions, and we primarily focus on it for healing work, but what it's actually doing is it's restoring a natural balance and resonance. The reason that we have this feeling of disease is because we're no longer in resonance with the higher source that is supposed to be supporting the functions of the body. That's way beyond the consciousness of most people, but every classical tradition was aware of it, and they had to restore that connection. So in the ancient Egyptian mysteries, they understood about the importance, let's say, of the heart. And so there are particular biosignatures for the heart that not only have a effect at a more gross physical vitality level, it also has effects on human consciousness. For example, the place of the sinoatrial node or the sinus node, the master pacemaker of the body, is actually the place understood by the ancient Egyptians and by Sufi traditions today as the place that higher vibrational forces resonate in the human physical body and restore our connection to higher sources. Years ago, I had a very serious car accident, serious damage to my neck and my spine, had a hard time just being able to move around. And through the use of the correct bionumeral alteration of a biosignature, it gave me back my quality of life. And when you change the numerical sequencing of the patterns then actually changes the level that the pattern is vibrating with. Now, for practical work, one of the major things that we teach people is harmonizing electromagnetic fields. Dr. Kareem actually demonstrated that he could harmonize the electromagnetic fields in entire small cities in a project in Switzerland in 2003. And we have various types of tools that we can use to create energetic effects. This biogeometry cube, but well, the cube creates a strong concentration of this BG3 harmonizing force in an environment. The Hamburg emitter was used in the Swiss project. This allows us actually to set this up and to target distant sources of electromagnetic disturbance, cell towers, things of that kind, and to actually transmute it from the distant source. Within a location itself, things like the space harmonizer will help to create a balanced energy within the location. The outdoor stand is used in the Earth itself to balance and harmonize the energies in the Earth. Now, one of the really fascinating things is the concept of balancing brain hemispheres. One aspect of it has to do with the basic concept of a toroidal flow of energy. Now, one of the things that I learned over 30 years ago, based on my work in the U.S. Marine Corps as a nuclear biological chemical warfare specialist that then led to my studying 
geometric forms in biology, chemistry, and physics, and then into the work of finding the same patterns in classical traditions for healing and spiritual development, is that whenever you start working in a body of work and people start talking about a torus structure and they start talking about vortex patterns, you should pay attention because these are core energetic patterns that all creation are based on. So if you get a sphere, open it up top and the bottom and get energy to move through the center. Now the center of the sphere that connects to the original unified source and the periphery of the sphere that connects to the entire vibrational spectrum are constantly circulating together. Connect to the unified source going through the channel, go out to the created world on the perimeter, and now you've got a sphere that has a perfect energy circulation. That is the form of the energy field around a human body. It's the form of an energy field around phenomena from the microscopic up to the galactic. This is a very important energy circulation pattern. And the exact center of that is the channel through the center of the sphere that's in the form of a hyperbola. Hyperbola is kind of like an hourglass. And so there is a particular creation pattern that you see Dr. Kareem has put into form here where it's two hyperbola. And in the human energy field, this actually operates as one that goes through the central axis of the body. And that's what he refers to as the spiritual axis. And then there's the time-space axis that runs more on the horizontal axis through the body. Again, this gets involved and I can't go through the whole thing right now. I just want to give you a basic idea. And so a bulge appears on one of these because when the independent being begins to perceive within space-time, it creates an expansion from the center outward and it creates the bulge you see here. Now what this leads to then is that Dr. Kareem found that there was a resonance when he broke the two forms apart to be two pillars. Sometimes he refers to them as the pillars of wisdom. This one here without the bulge, without the space-time perception, resonates very strongly with the right brain hemisphere and the intuitive perception of a human being. The one with the space-time perception that grounds things into physical reality has the bulge coming out from the center from space-time perception. That's connected to the rational faculties of the left brain. Dr. Kareem then added our biogeometry dials to the top that allows us to tune in different vibratory powers. So what you can do with this is you can actually tune any person's brain hemispheres to specific vibratory states. So one of the things that we demonstrate is that if you activate the person's visual cortex in their brain in properly tuning it in with this tool, what you can then do is from the visual cortex, you can fill it with the BG3 unified source vibration and anything the person looks at will immediately harmonize with BG3 energy. They will become a harmonizing force straight through the visual ray coming out of the eyes. This is going into then practical things that they would do in the Egyptian temples with modern techniques. Now these earth energy grids are themselves connected to the whole vibrating matrix of the earth. And so one of the major things that Dr. Kareem went into at this conference that got super deep is this concept then of what we described before about the toroidal energy structures of space-time that we use in the advanced training for tuning the human brain hemispheres. He connected that up with the vibrating matrix of all of the energy grids on the Earth. And then looking at how that manifests once again as the space-time wormhole, which we have here, and then the mental spiritual wormhole here in the central axis of the torus around the human energy field. And then he began to go into very deep levels about how human beings are anchored into space-time through entire structures of these toroidal fields, back and front vortices in hyperbolas in the inside of the torus, and that that is the foundation of all of the chakras of the human body. With then, just like in cosmological structures, you have the hyperbola, you have the vortex coming from two different directions, like at the chakras, and in between it, you get the spinning disk of BG3 energy, just like you see in cosmological structures. He says it's applicable to one life cycle or several lives. This is an entire pattern of the vibrational template for a person's incarnation to root them into space-time. He then took that further and talked about the way that we materialize things from the higher planes into physical space-time through structures of this kind, which then are replicated microcosmically inside the human body. And so, again, there's expansion and collapse with the BG3 field in the central disk. This becomes an entire cosmological structure and also leads to the concept 
of the gates. So when they describe in the ancient Egyptian tradition about the multiple gates you pass through in the Duat or the underworld, in the higher dimensional worlds, this gates exist within the center of the toroidal movement because the entire structure of movements in space-time and outside of space-time from one dimension to another are all based on the same template. Whether it's in your energy field or in great dimensional structures, it's the same pattern replicated at higher and higher levels and higher and higher scales. It's what in sacred geometry we call scale invariance. And so this means then that our brain structure and our ability to perceive higher spiritual realities and things of that kind are a resonance between the structures that affect our brain hemispheres and the same structure at a higher level of construction elsewhere in space-time in the movement through these dimensional gates. And so that's the concept in the ancient traditions, including very much in ancient Egypt, of initiation, of being able to travel through the gates. If you read the ancient Egyptian text that we have translated in modern times with the name that it did not have in ancient Egypt, which is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, its name in the original Egyptian is closer to the Book of Coming Forth into Light. That particular text talks about passing through all these gates in the afterlife that lead to all of these different attainments and different experiences. And this was then connected to what we often hear about today with near-death experiences of traveling through the tunnel. The tunnel is the interior of the Taurus. It's that internal movement. And there's an initiation bridge. Death is the walk across the bridge in the movement between the right brain perception and the left brain perception. The human mind and the structure of the brain is itself a microcosm of a higher dimensional structure that is the essence of initiation. And then when you get to the center, the crossing point in the human brain, that becomes the corpus callosum. And the way that we interact in the center point with BG3 harmonizing energy in the center, the effects of the two hemispheres. And every human existence, physical existence, is like a snowflake that then anchors with the left brain perception into space-time on top of a primordial ocean of energy. This has to do with the pulse of time in the human body. Your heart is connected to a higher source that creates the pulse of the heart. So the breathing of the lungs and the pulse of the heart are in a particular rhythm that's entrained to something at a higher level. Once that gets off that rhythm, all types of health problems are created. The balance of the time pulse in the heart pacemaker is connected to the weighing of the heart in the Hall of Judgment in ancient Egypt. That means that there is a master balancing method based on restoring the correct pulsation of time within the human body that connects to the lungs and the heart but is also beyond the lungs and the heart. So the first thing we need to be aware of is that every person has a unique configuration in their own energy and their consciousness. That configuration of their energy and consciousness leads to the activation of specific energy centers in their body more than others and specific energetic connections and flows of energy movements from one center to another. This can even take the form of particular types of geometries in the body of energy, which have specific purposes and effects on the person's consciousness and energy. One of the first things that any esoteric teacher will do when he meets a person on the path, or a person that's going to be a student of some kind, is they will look into their energetic structure. Because the person's energetic structure reveals their level of maturity, their present capacities, and all spiritual teachers know that a certain stability and crystallization of parts of the structure of a person is essential in order for them to be able to understand and work responsibly with higher work regarding spiritual realities. Now, this is a very rich topic with many different facets to it. And we find through karmic research that it's through our struggles and striving and to a great degree suffering that we have had in previous lifetimes that has created what we experience as our greatest strengths in our current lifetime. This is a type of karmic compensation for our suffering and it's the purpose for these difficult experiences and trials that we have in the earthly world. As we've mentioned before, no matter how intense our suffering is, in time we will forget it. But all of the gifts that we got, all of the strengths and the change to our core structure that we got through overcoming those challenges will become a permanent part of us and become the strengths that we enjoy the most in our daily life. Now, understanding our energetic structure 
Every thought that you have, every feeling, every impulse to action that you have creates particular energetic movements and activations in our subtle bodies. And this is connected to one of our core principles in spiritual science, that consciousness and energy are two sides of the same coin. They constantly affect each other. It's a two-way street, in other words. So that if you do work with your consciousness, that work will then reflect in energy movements and activations in your subtle body. If you do practices based on energetic movements, so Qi Kong and things of that kind, those energetic movements will change your consciousness. We need to be aware that the spiritual practices taught in different spiritual traditions have been intentionally crafted by the teachers in those traditions in order to create specific structures in the subtle bodies of the initiates within that tradition. The person's subtle body is being formed through these practices in such a way that they can then perform the functions that are focused on by whatever that particular tradition is. And different traditions focus on different types of functions and abilities. One particular tradition will focus on your developing very strong healing abilities with the etheric life body. Another will do almost nothing with that, but will focus on being able to discern higher spiritual realities at the astral plane and in higher spiritual planes. Through our work in modern spiritual science, we can analyze the different traditions and get clarity about what tradition focuses on what strengths to develop through the practices that they give in their initiation tradition that again create specific structures in the subtle bodies of their initiates that make their consciousness and energy body focused on particular things. This is an essential first step of our being able to recognize our own structure and the way that things affect us so that we can make informed decisions about what practices we want to do and we know how the practices affect us. On the independent path of spiritual initiation, we need to be fully conscious of the particular structure and purpose and effects of all the spiritual practices that we do. Now, the next few stages that come after this checking into the energetic field are as follows. At the next stage, Two of the simplest layers that we can examine in our subtle bodies to get a sense of effects on them are the etheric body level and the astral level. The etheric body level or layer is experienced when you feel vibration or tingling or density or pressure in the subtle bodies. When we say density, it means that a part of your energy body, like let's say around the third eye, feels more dense than the energy around it. When we say pressure, it's like something is pressing in on a particular energetic location in your body. And you can also perceive these etheric sensations in terms of heat and cold sensations. Not necessarily a physical sensation of heat and cold, but an energetic sensation of heat and cold. Then the astral layer is experienced quite differently, where we either feel or see in our own mental screen light and darkness and also color. Those are the particular modalities of the astral plane, which is again quite different from the type of feeling that we have of the etheric body. And so when we do energy field awareness, we can look into what we're feeling and what we're perceiving with the light and color in parts of our own energetic body. And again, this is also illuminating for us the experiences we have that are related to the etheric life body versus those that are within the astral body. So now we're becoming actually conscious of the subtle bodies and able to look into the structures created inside of them. The next level is that we can then perceive which exact energy centers of our body are activated or are sedated by a particular spiritual practice. So those energy centers in us that are activated will have increased sensations within our energy body of their energy movement and activity. And we can also have sometimes an internal vision of the types of qualities that we just described for the etheric and astral uh, layers of ourselves when these energy centers are activated. Now, at higher levels, this can become a direct perception of how these activated energy centers then connect to particular spiritual beings, spiritual worlds, spiritual forces of various kinds. That's how this progresses over time. The next stage is that after this initial work of just becoming aware of it presents itself to us when we empirically check in during the energy field awareness practice, we can then start checking in to specific centers of our energy body. In other words, not just seeing which ones manifest themselves to our inner awareness when we check in, but we can methodically go through looking at and examining different centers of the energy body one at a time. And so 
The way to start with this practice is looking at what we call the anchor points. You can check into the energy center that's the anchor point for the I am presence that's in the very center of the head in the cave of Rama. You can check into the anchor points for the astral body in the head and the heart and the hara or the belly region of the body. You can look into the seven anchor points of the etheric, which are what we think of normally as the seven chakras of the body. You can look at the 12 anchor points of the physical body, which is related to the 12 levels of the physical body and also the 12 meridians of Chinese medicine. These are particular anchor points then that we can check into to begin to see how we're getting structured. Then we can also take a look at this in terms of the structuring effects on people's different subtle bodies themselves. So in other words, as we said before, a person may have a very highly developed mental body, but a very underdeveloped emotional body. Their emotional body may be very wounded or immature, which is why they fled into the higher mental body to be able to think and cope with things in the world without having to deal with those painful emotions. In fact, it's very common that even many Eastern gurus that are presented as very, very highly developed have very highly developed mental or higher spiritual bodies, but still have major issues that are held within the emotional body. We can then at a next higher level, begin to do more advanced work that actually is most effective after we have done a training in sacred geometry, when sacred geometry is taught as an actual initiation science. When you learn sacred geometry as initiation science, you can start then looking at deeper levels of structure that a person has, and also energetic structures in the world that are based on particular geometric forms that have particular vibratory qualities and have particular effects on consciousness. And so one aspect of this is looking for the geometric forms that are created in the subtle bodies through the structuring process. This can be something as simple as particular triangles of energy that are formed in the energy body, where, for example, three activated centers will be linked up together. Or it can be something more advanced, like looking at something like the tree of life pattern known in the Jewish Kabbalah, and that has offshoots in other traditions, like what in the Daskalos tradition in Cyprus is called the symbol of life, which is based on the same basic pattern. And this is a more complex pattern of 10 energy centers in the body and their energy pathways of connection. As we're looking at this next deeper aspect of studying structure, we can look for these types of geometric structures. But that's easiest once you've actually learned what these geometric structures are and what they signify. And that's best done through a higher level type of sacred geometry education that is based on initiation. When it's based on initiation work, sacred geometry becomes what the Rosicrucians refer to as learning to read the secret script, because these are the actual archetypes or patterns that everything in our world is based on. And they connect us in higher level initiation work to directly perceiving the thought forms from the mind of God that lay down all of these patterns. And the final thing to mention here about our learning to perceive our own parts of our energetic structure as we're giving these bridging concepts to more advanced work, is looking for aspects of our structure from the perspective of different systems of energy qualities in the subtle bodies taught in different traditions. So for example, you can look at it from the perspective of Chinese medicine, where you look at yin and yang energies in the body as simple polarities, and also the system of the five elements or the five phases in which all of these different elements in the body work with one another in particular cycles. And so, for example, you'll find if a person has focused too much on kundalini practices and raising fire energy in the body, they may have ended up creating great difficulties in their own health and energetic balance by having burned out the water element from the body. And so seeing it from these different perspectives will illuminate different things that's going on in a person's energetic structure. Or you can examine it from the perspective of the three doshas of Indian Ayurveda, or from the perspective of the four different ethers in Rudolf Steiner's etheric physics that comes from the Rosicrucians. All of these becomes frames of reference or perspectives that we can use to be able to really understand subtle levels of a person's structure. Now this then brings us to the topic of us making informed choices about what practices we're going to do based on our energetic structure understanding the need to have balanced work in active and receptive meditations, and also the six essential exercises, which are the ones that, as we've described, help to harmonize and balance all the aspects of our core development 
They'll help to neutralize detrimental effects from other types of spiritual practices that may lead us to becoming one-sided otherwise. They will help to guarantee our success with our spiritual development and our different types of spiritual exercises that we engage in. As we look at aspects of our different subtle bodies, and if a person has problems with their emotional body, for example, that our third essential exercise, which is connected to illuminating our feelings and also the control of the feelings so that we don't have to externally express every feeling that we have, but instead we relax into the feeling and let it become integrated into us instead of being expressed externally in an uncontrolled and sometimes destructive way. Another example of this as far as our choosing spiritual practices is that it may be that a person that is very spiritually ungrounded, that has difficulties in their everyday life, that they have not fully incarnated in the physical body and they don't even feel themselves in the body very strongly, may be attracted to learning advanced practices like out-of-body travel. And what you'll actually find is that this is something they have a natural subconscious tendency toward because they're already partly out of their body. They already don't want to be fully incarnated. And so they're naturally attracted to learning about being fully out of the body and out of body travel. And there's nothing wrong with learning these skills. These are natural skills at higher states of development. But we have to look at what's going to create the most balance and harmony according to their current structure. If they're not well incarnated presently, then they'd be much better served by doing work of a Qigong type, where they work on the etheric body and they focus on the feeling of etheric vibration and being actually present within the etheric vibration in their physical body, particularly in the lower energy centers of the body, the ones that are in the abdomen region, and then with the energy channels that go down into the legs, all the way down to the feet and to the kidney one point in Chinese medicine, that's at the sole of the foot that connects us to the earth energy. So a person who is not well grounded, who is not well incarnated, who spends time opening up the lower energy centers of the abdomen, the leg channels, and then the channels in the feet that connect to the earth will get much greater benefits for their spiritual development than focusing on out of body travel at that current stage of their process. That's what we're talking about, choosing practices based on your energetic structure and being aware of this. Another example of this is that normally today when you go to a yoga class, the yoga class has a particular set of standard asanas or postures that they will lead you through in a sequence. It'll be different from one class to another based on who a person's teacher was and what sequence was that they trained in. But in higher levels of Indian Hatha Yoga, the teacher is trained to be able to actually perceive aspects of the energetic structure of the students that they have and they will then assign them particular asanas or postures, sometimes pranayama breathing practices, that are based on balancing whatever things are out of balance currently in their body of energy. Now they do this based on concepts usually from Indian Ayurveda of the three doshas. And so for example, if they have a student that has too much pitta in the body, too much fire energy, they don't need to give them postures or breathing exercises that's gonna increase the fire in the body, they need to give them ones that will sedate the fire and help to increase other qualities. And by the same token, if a person has too much vata, too much air element in the body, they don't need to do practices that increase the air element. They need to sedate it and to increase these other elements. And so these are some practical examples of what I'm talking about regarding choosing spiritual practices based on our structure. This is really essential to understand and unfortunately it's not discussed much in modern metaphysics. But for your independent path of spiritual initiation and for our new spiritual science, this is a really fundamental issue for us. And so we've all heard the phrase, you can't take it with you, in regards to you can't take your material possessions and accomplishments in your earthly life with you when you pass through the gate of death. And that's absolutely correct. The thing you can take with you is your structure. The way you take with you is the way that you have worked with and the degree to which you have illuminated your thinking your feeling, your willing, the activation of energy centers, the connections between them, the stabilized geometric forms that are part of your structure. This is what you take with you because this becomes essentially the core foundation or blueprint that makes you who you are. This creates your future spiritual destiny. It helps determine what your experience after death is going to be. Are you going to be primarily unconscious and have to be guided by higher spiritual beings through the afterlife and back to your next life? 
like a person who's deaf, dumb, and blind in the physical world because you don't have fully developed organs of spiritual perception because you didn't work on them during your earthly life? Or will you be able to be more conscious and more autonomous in that after-death journey and returning to the next lifetime? It'll also help to determine things like what spiritual realms and beings you're attracted to and that you go through in this after-death process and what you're attracted to and what you get as your life conditions in your next incarnation. Your karma is laid into that structure and everything about your activation of your potential and what your next conditions of life are going to be, both in the spiritual world and in the physical world, are all based on your structure. That's why this is such a vital topic. And this work on our structure can most effectively be done while we are physically incarnated and conscious in the physical body. We can't put it off until we go into the spiritual world. The most important work needs to be done here. That's the gift of being here and being in a physical body.